Sonic the Hedgehog 2 is now out in theaters, with fans agreeing that it does the source material blue justice. If you don't believe us, just look at the audience score on Rotten Tomatoes. It's clear that the cast and crew for the movie share a lot of love for the Sonic universe. So much so that there are neat references from the video games and comics sprinkled throughout the film. Some of them subtle, others pretty obvious. So help me Thomas! Sorry, sorry. So now, let's take a look at the easter eggs found in Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Be warned, there are spoilers ahead, so if you haven't seen the movie yet, we encourage you to stop watching this video and come back after you've seen it. It's good, trust us. Let's start by quickly knocking out five obvious references that fans should pick up on quickly. First is Eggman's floating vehicle, which more closely resembles the ones he flies in the games. Speaking of flying vehicles, Tails' plane the tornado makes an appearance in the movie and on the poster, but it was originally a plane used to fly a banner at Randall and Rachel's wedding. He commandeered it off screen and made it his own, using it in the climax of the movie, that climax being a boss battle with Eggman's giant robot. And it looks quite similar to the Death Egg robot that made its debut in Sonic the Hedgehog 2, the game, not the movie. Then there's the Mushroom World, which made a brief appearance at the beginning of the movie, and it's an obvious reference to Mushroom Hill's own from Sonic and Knuckles. Finally, there's the Guardian Units of the Nations, or GUN for short. This organization first appeared in Sonic Adventure 2, and they're responsible for a top-secret weapon called Project Shadow. And if you watched the movie's mid credit scene, you'd know that this Project Shadow will be in the third movie. But now that we got the obvious references out of the way, let's get to the more subtle ones. Now this may be a coincidence, but the scene in the beginning where Sonic is stopping a robbery in Seattle bears a similar resemblance to the opening of Sonic Adventure, where the blue blur is seen jumping between buildings and following a group of cop cars to a crime occurring in Station Square. The only difference is that in the movie, Sonic doesn't wind up fighting a sentient water monster named Chaos, although he does cause an eruption of sewer water on the streets. Gross. When Sonic goes back to his home in Green Hills, he goes to sleep in his race car bed. And you know, that bed kind of looks like his ride in the Sonic Racing series of games. In fact, he even had a race car bed in the comic series. Just goes to show that he lives, breathes, and sleeps speed. In the first movie, we caught a glimpse of the infamous Sanic character in the form of a drawing. Unfortunately, one movie wasn't enough for this abomination, so it reappeared in the sequel. While Sonic is out doing vigilante business in Seattle, Tom walks in to find that Sonic replaced himself with a doll that looks more like Sanic than Sonic. Sorry dude, not everyone can be Ferris Bueller. If you're a hardcore Sonic fan, you did not miss this next reference. After Robotnik was banished to the Mushroom World in the first movie, his assistant Agent Stone started a coffee shop in Green Hills called the Mean Bean Cafe. This is a clever nod to the video game Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine, which was a rethemed version of Puyo Puyo. Even those with a keen eye probably missed this next reference. During the chase scene with Knuckles, Tails, and Sonic, Knuckles bashes through a truck carrying loads of Splash Hill branded water. This is a direct shout out to Splash Hill Zone in Sonic the Hedgehog 4. Yep, they put a Sonic the Hedgehog 4 reference in this movie. That's how deep we're going here. During the scene where Sonic and Tails are in a Siberian pub, Tails attempts to use his own translator device to communicate with the locals. However, the device doesn't work that well, causing a misunderstanding that soon leads to a dance off. Yeah, if you haven't seen the movie by now, why are you still watching this video? Anyway, this translator is similar to the one he makes in Sonic Colors to communicate with the Wisps. And it works just as well. He says his name is Toxalot, and he's from a faraway soda, and where flowers water them with dances. If you thought the Sonic 4 reference was obscure, wait until you hear about the symbols on the owl statue in the Siberian mountain. These symbols are directly referenced from the language of the Babylonians in, wait for it, Sonic Riders. This was confirmed by a storyboard supervisor and lead Sonic designer Tyson Hess. Really, no Sonic game is safe from being referenced in these films. 
Sonic shreds is some serious powder to get away from an avalanche in the mountains. Naturally, this isn't the first time we've seen him snowboard, because he's done it in Sonic the Hedgehog 3 and Sonic Adventures 1 and 2. Well, Sonic Adventure 1 had him snowboard away from an avalanche, like in the movie, while 2 took some creative liberties. Follow me, set me free, trust me and we will escape from the city. Once Sonic and the gang arrive at the Master Emerald's location, they find that it's inside a maze filled with booby traps left and right. You could call this a... Labyrinth Zone. Kind of like the one from the first Sonic game. Also filled with booby traps left and right. Throughout the film, Sonic talks about how he can't swim. This comes into play later when he rescues Knuckles from drowning, and even though Knuckles is a great swimmer, all Sonic can do is little hops underwater. Just like the games! He even sucks up an air bubble to stay under longer. All that was missing from this scene is that scary music that plays when Sonic is about to drown. Completely missed opportunity! Back in Green Hills, Agent Stone is looking at potential new outfits for Robotnik in his Robotnik Boutique. If you blink, you might miss the classic Robotnik outfit in the selection. Even though Carrie's Robotnik already looks pretty slick in this movie, we wouldn't mind if he looked even more like his video game counterpart in the next movie. Hopefully Jim Carrey doesn't retire from acting until Sonic the Hedgehog 3 is done. In the scene where the Death Egg robot is attacking Green Hills, Agent Stone serves as a co-pilot to Eggman, only he doesn't really know how to pilot the mech. Luckily, he finds a manual to the machine, and it looks exactly like a Sega Genesis game manual. I'm betting this is a reference that went over most children's heads in the theaters. And those are 17 references found in Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Did you find any more easter eggs in the movie that we might have missed? Let us know in the comments below, and check out the videos on the right for more topics you might be interested in. Until next time, bye!